quarks and leptons, as well as most composite particles, like protons and neutrons, are fermions, for reasons we do not fully understand. A consequence of the odd half intake of spin is the fermion. The axiomatic itself marshals the power of a non-denumerable infinite set, precisely that of the war machine. It seems difficult, however, to use the war machine in the general treatment of minorities without triggering the absolute war it is supposed to ward off. We have seen the war machine institute is the fermions obey the Pauli exclusion principle and therefore cannot coexist in the same state at the same location at the same time. Bosons are those particles which have an integer spin 0, 1, 2. All the false carrier particles are bosons as are those composite particles with an even number of fermion particles, like mesons. Um, light travels at 186,282 miles per second, which is quite quick. It travels 5.8 trillion miles in one year. 10 trillion. We have seen the War Machine Institute quantitative and qualitative processes, miniaturizations and adaptions that enable it to graduate its attack or counter-attacks each time as a function of the nature of the unspecified enemy. Individuals, groups, peoples, but under these conditions the capitalist axiomatic continually produces and reproduces what the war machine tries to exterminate. Even the organization of famine multi multiplies the starving as much as it kills them. Even the organization of camps an area where the socialist sector has dreadfully distinguished itself does not assure the radical solution of which power dreams. The extermination of a minority engenders a minority of that minority. However relentless the killing, it is relatively difficult to liquidate a people or a group, even in the third world. Once it has enough connections with elements of the axiomatic in still other respects, it can be predicted that the impending problems of the economy, which will consist in reforming capital in relation to new resources under sea oil, metallic nodules, foodstuffs, will require not only a redistrib redistribution of the world that will mobilize the worldwide war machine and train its parts on the new objectives, we will also probably see the formation or reformation of minotaurian aggregates in relation to the affected regions. Generally speaking, minorities do not receive a better solution of their problem by integration, even with axioms, statutes, autonomies, independences. Their tactics necessarily go that route, but if they are revolutionary, it's because they carry within them a deeper movement that challenges the worldwide axiomatic. The power of minority, of particularity, finds its figure or its universal consciousness in the proletariat. But as long as the working class defines itself by an acquired status, or even by a th theoretically conquered state, it appears only as capital, a part of capital, variable capital, and does not leave the plane of capital. At best, the plan becomes bureaucratic. On the other hand, it is by leaving the the plan of capital and never ceasing to leave it that the mass becomes increasingly revolutionary and destroys the dominant equilibrium of the denumerable sets. It is hard to see what an Amazon state would be, a woman's state or a state of erratic workers, a state of the refusal of work. If minorities do not constitute viable states culturally, politically, economically, it is because the state form is not appropriate to them, nor the axiomatic of capital, nor the corresponding culture. We have often seen capitalism maintain and organize inviolable states according to its needs and for the precise purpose of crushing minorities. The minorities issue is instead that of smashing capitalism, of redefining socialism.
constitution a war machine capable of countering the world war machine by other means. If the two solutions of extermination and integration hardly seem possible, it is due to the deepest law of capitalism. It continually sets and then repeals its own limits, but in so doing it gives rise, gives rise to numerous flows in all directions that escape its axiomatic. Capitalism is effectuated in the denumerable sets serving as its models. It necessarily constitutes non-denumerable sets that cut across and disrupt those models. It does not affect the conjugation of the deteriorized and decoded flows without those flows forging further ahead, without their escaping both the axiomatic that can con conjugates them and the models that re uh, territorize them, without their tending to enter into connections that delineate a new land. This is not a dispersion or a fragmentation. We are instead back at the opposition between, on the one hand, a plane of consistency and on the other, the plane of organization and development of capital and the bureaucratic socialist plane. Attention, attention. There is in each case a constructivism, a diagrammatism operating by the determination of the conditions of the problem and by transversal links between problems. It opposes both the automation of the capitalist axioms and bureaucratic programming. From this standpoint, when we talk about undecidable propositions, we are not referring to the uncertainty of the results, which is necessarily a part of every system. We are referring, on the contrary, to the coexistence and inseparability of that which the system conjugates and that which never ceases to escape it following lines of flight that are themselves connectable. The un undecidable is the germ and locus par excellence of revolutionary decisions. Some people invoke the high technology of the world system of enslavement, but even, and especially, this machinic enslavement abounds in undecidable propositions and movements that, far from belonging to a domain of knowledge reserved for sworn specialists, provide so many weapons for the becoming of everybody, everything, becoming radio, becoming electronic, becoming molecular. Every struggle is a function of all of these undecidable propositions and constructs revolutionary connections in opposition to the conjugations of the axiomatic smooth space and striated space, nomad space and sedentary space, the space in which the war machine develops and the space instituted by the state apparatus are not, the, are, are, are not of the same nature. No sooner do we note a simple opposition between the two kinds of space than we must indicate a much more complex difference by virtue of which the successive terms of the oppositions fail to coincide entirely and no yeah, sooner have we done that Facebook. than we must Sorry. remind ourselves that the two spaces in fact exist only in mixture smooth space is constantly being translated transversed into a striated well, space she, she striated really space is constantly She's being reversed internet return to a smooth space. She's got to be careful. In the first case, one organizes even the That there is such a distinction is what accounts for the fact that the two spaces do not communicate with each other in the same way. It is the uh, de jure distinction that determines the forms assumed by a given de facto mix and the direction or meaning of the mix. Is a smooth space captured, enveloped by a striated space, or does a striated space dissolve into a smooth space, allow a smooth space to develop? This raises a number of 
simultaneous questions, the simple oppositions between the two spaces, the complex differences, the de facto mixes and the passages from one to another, the principles of the mixture, which are not, all, uh, uh, which are not at all symmetrical sometimes causing a passage from the smooth to the striated, sometimes from the striated to the smooth, according to entirely different movements. We must therefore envision, in, 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 envision a certain number of models, which would be like various aspects of the two spaces and the relations between them. Are you listening? It was a decisive event when the mathematician Riemann uprooted the multiple from its predicate state and made it a noun. Multiplicity. It marked the end of a dialectics and the beginning of a typology and topology of multiplicities. Each multiplicity was defined by n determinations. Sometimes the determinations were independent of the situation and sometimes they depended upon it. For example, the magnitude of a vertical line between two points can be compared to the magnitude of a horizontal line between two other points. It is clear that the multiplicity in this case is metric, that it allows itself to be striated and that its determinations are magnitudes. On the other hand, two sounds of equal pitch and different intensity cannot be compared to two sounds of equal intensity and different pitch. In this case, two determinations can be compared only if one is a part of the other and if we restrict ourselves to the judgment that the latter is smaller than the former without being able to say by how much. Multiplicities of this second kind are not metric and allow themselves to be striated and measured only by indirect means, which they always resist. They are Anexact, yet rigorous. Uh, Meinong and Russell opposed the notion of distance to that of magnitude. Distances are not, strictly speaking, indivisible. They can be divided precisely in cases where the situation of one determination makes it a part of another. But unlike magnitudes, they cannot divide without changing in nature each time. An intensity, for example, is not composed of addable and uh, displaceable magnitudes. A temperature is not the sum of two smaller temperatures. A speed is not the sum of two smaller speeds. Since each intensity is itself a difference, it divides according to an order in which each term of the division differs in nature from the others. Distance is therefore a set of ordered differences. In other words, differences that are enveloped in one another in such a way that it is possible to judge which is larger or smaller, but not their exact magnitudes. For example, one can divide movement into the gallop, the trot, the walk, the stumble, but in such a way that what is divided changes in nature at each moment of the division. Without any one of these moments entering into the composition of any other, therefore the multiplicities of distance inseparable from a process of continuous variation, whereas multiplicities of magnitude distribute constants and variables. It's, uh, it would appear to be of no consequence. The underlying nature of life is occupied with a conceptual mind space within which I consider considerations that are of really ultimately a, um, like a wraith or a shadow or a flimsy um, a, a flimsy covering over a sunlit window um, what do you mean what on earth am I talking about